Um, thank you. I'm Vinicius Pacheco. I'm from Brazil. I have a funny accent. I'm based on Argentina. And uh, I'm senior software engineer at Eventbrite. And uh, it's a very cool company. Uh, and uh, without uh, uh, the support from this company, it's impossible to be here. I'm coming from uh, Mendoza was 20 hours in flight. So Mendoza, Argentina. And uh, please, applause for this company. They are amazing. Thank you. Uh, if you don't know me, uh, every time I gave normally uh, Star Wars talk. And uh, today, it's not different. So after this moment, I can't hear you. So OK, now. It's better. Uh, I released the book earlier this year, in January. And uh, the content of this talk, the subject of this talk, make part of my book. Uh, it's, there's the link and my Twitter, too, if you want to buy it. The e-book's very cheap. I think it's just nine pounds, something like this. And uh, let's start. Our agenda. What is CQRS? When can we apply this? Uh, understanding CQRS, applying, there is a live code, and uh, the common mistakes. When you see a Yoda on the screen, there is a live code, okay? It's uh, 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 the rule. So, what is CQRS? Someone here have been working with CQRS? Just to know, well, a couple of people. Uh, someone know what is a QRS or listen something about this pattern? Okay, great. So, uh, there's no doubt. Command, query, responsibility, segregation. It what means uh, CQRS. It was a pattern documented by Greg Young and uh, he told this about the pattern in 2010. Uh, Basically, where do you have just one object responsible to change things in the server and to retrieve data in the server, you will split this in two different segments. That one will be responsible to write and another one responsible to read. So, when can we use CQRS? Uh, there is a Chewbacca. I love Chewbacca. He's fine. So, the normal architecture, thinking the normal ar application architecture. Uh, no, 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 it's not, it's not this architecture. Uh, this one. Uh, there is a UI or API, a domain, a repository, a model uh, that's responsible to connect with the DB and to write and to read stuff and uh, uh, could have a controller or something like this. It is our uh, bootstrap application. So, it's an instance of my Bootstrap application, and it's connected with my storage. And uh, when I deliver a business to the internet, there is a word that's very dangerous to my business. This word is success. And why? With success, there are more customers, more clients, more people uh, uh, connected with me, and now I have a problem, and why? My application uh, 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 has a limit, and uh, I will rent a new machine. Okay, it's great. And uh, this process uh, is repeated over and over and over again, and I have a new instance and another instance, and now I could figure out that my scalability is not more linear. My second instance could have a linear scalability, like, okay, I have, I don't know, uh, 10,000 requests per second, and now I have 20,000 uh, 20, uh, requests per second. But uh, at some, there is a moment that my scalability is not the same. I cannot scale 50% or it's just 10% for each new instance. And uh, why? Because maybe your issue is not in your application, but in the storage. And, uh, there is another instance that doesn't scale very well, and now it's over. 
my storage start to create too much latency, or uh, there are very, he's very responsible to do things that he's not uh, prepared to do, and uh, my business out. It's a, 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 a sadly day. So, there is a first option to try to scale to solve my problem. And uh, do you know what is this option? Someone knows? Someone? No? No? Uh, master slave. It is my first option. There's a slave, you know, like a slave from Java, the rut. And yeah, she's a slave. Yeah, OK. Master slave. And uh, uh, there is my application, now I have the master slave, and uh, I'm just replicating the data from my master, and my master is going to receive all the writing process, and uh, I'm going to replicate this to my slave that will be responsible to retrieve the data. But in fact, I'm, I'm not optimizing the data. I'm not optimizing the queries, I'm just replicating the data. And it's very hard to measure how many slaves I have. And when my problem is in the writing process, uh, is to, my problem is to write, it's very difficult to figure out how I could improve stuff on master. And uh, it's not the solution for this specifically kind of issue. Okay, it's a good approach, but not a solution. And there is another stuff, eventual consistency. If uh, you are not if you don't have the good conscience that, okay, there's in my mind, I would like to use eventual consistence. Okay, it's okay, eventual consistence is good sometimes. But if you don't have this in your mind that accidentally you are using eventual consistence, uh, it's an issue for you. Okay. And uh, there is a second option. Do you know what is this option? Someone knows? Someone knows? Mind, mind, remember like control. No, it's close, but it's not this, not command. Uh, someone, someone? No? Okay. It's cache. In fact, because it's memory, you know, like my trick. So, yeah, bro, erase your mind. Yeah, like, thing. yeah, Obi Wan Kenobi is great. So, uh, it's a good strategy. Now, I'm put a cache, and it's real. Uh, uh, remove some uh, uh, have processes over my, my database. And uh, it's okay, uh, but uh, I'm not optimizing the queries yet, and uh, I'm optimizing a segment that normally is not so expensive than the right process. So read normally, usually, is easy than write things on DDB. And uh, I'm trying to optimize my issue, that's write and read, just optimizing the read process. Um, okay, and there is another stuff that's very hard. If you are old in IT, you know that there are two things that is very difficult. The first one is name it classes, and the second one is invalid cache. So, and now I have data synchronization. The first one is invalid cache. Okay. So, uh, it was a pleasure, but I can't hear you. Sorry, it's the year. <laughs> uh, when secure as is util, when my storage is a bottleneck, definitely you could find you could use this pattern as a solution. Uh, when I have complex queries to my ORM, and they could optimize these queries. And uh, when they have a big number of users updating a, sm a small data set, and uh, the data could be outdated. In fact, if you think on the Facebook feed or in, in the Instagram, every time you are consuming data that is outdated. And why? Because when you are looking, someone updates the feed. So, it's eventual consistency every time. It's, it's not... Okay, I have my consistency, it's very well, it's, it's totally right. No, 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 it's, it's not true. It's not true. In fact, for business that a huge number of users are updating a, sm a small data set or a small piece of code like a feed, you have venture consistency every time. And for this, 
uh, uh, secure as is a good uh, pattern. So understanding CQRS. Teach me, said Ray. I don't like the last two movies, but yeah, I prefer that Star Wars has have just six movies and the, 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 the cartoons. I like the cartoons, Clone Wars. <laughs> Come back. Yeah. Oh, look, 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 Jar Jar Binks will, will, will appear here. Yeah, yeah, you will see, you will see, you will see. Not boo yet, there is a good motivation. Uh, query stack uh, in the common stack. Basically, the secure RS is divided in two big pieces. The query stack that's responsible to retrieve data and the command stack that's responsible to, to uh, administrate my writing processes. Okay, the query stack is simple than, simpler than uh, the command stack. It's, put, it's synchronous normally, and it presumes flat queries. Do you know what's a flat query? Someone don't, someone don't know what's a flat query? Okay. Uh, a query could have joins. It's, it's a simple explanation about flat queries, okay? It's a poor explanation about flat queries. Uh, a flat query is every query that I'm going to optimize the data to reduce the number of joins that I'm going to do in my database. So if I know which kind of data I'm going to retrieve, I will prepare this data to return with just one index or two index, but not doing joins and, uh, and, uh, and going to the deep level on, the, my, on my data. So it's basically this. And the command stack is potentially asynchronous, uh, has a behavior centric. So each command looks like a, a, a use case and uh, has an imperative fashion. So it's not more just a post for my endpoint, my endpoint user. No, the endpoint is an imperative command like create user or uh, update the username or something like this. It's a command. And uh, the command handlers just return success or failure. Like, uh, I accept your uh, request, but I don't know what happened. I don't know what will be the result. And uh, the command updates the own entity that make parts of the command stack and going to dispatch events that there is an event component that will be responsible to uh, uh, update or to normalize the order DB or the order storage that responsible that the responsible is the query stack. Uh, synchronization. There are four ways to synchronize data using SecureRS that's like uh, by the book. So the first one is the automatic update. Uh, the automatic update is like uh, I receive the data from my put process, my post or put, my command. And now I'm going to send uh, uh, an event that is totally uh, 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 synchronous using RPC or binary communication or REST, and doesn't matter. But the, 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 the component responsible to normalize the DBs will do this stuff instantaneously. So uh, there is the update possible. Update possible is the most common uh, synchronization in CQRS. So uh, we, the command going to dispatch an event and the storage this information on a bus or on a broker or on a queue and uh, the component will be responsible to consume this event and uh, normalize the DB on the query stack. But there is all the time of the world to do this. The third option is the controller update. So I go into update to normalize my DBs uh, every two minutes is an example. There is a Chrome responsible to normalize the, the data. And uh, the other option is the update on demand. So when I receive a get for my, to my query stack, the query stack is going to check, hey, I'm outdated. If I'm outdated, I'm going to say, hey, please come on, give me the data. 
and they're going to be created a new event that the query stack is going to consume and write in the ONDB. So queuing. It's a diagram that there are many, many, many diagrams about uh, uh, CQRS. And uh, I like specifically this one. And why? Because uh, it's like uh, if you follow this diagram, you could use all these synchronization styles, OK? And uh, it's very flexible diagram. So there is a client UA API internet that's going to talk with my public facing if we are thinking services. Uh, and the, my public facing going to deliver a command. The command will enqueue the information and my domain layer gets the information and the domain knows what the, is necessary to do. And the command will update my normalized B, that's my source of true. Normally this one here is uh, 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 SQL DB, and uh, going to dispatch an event, this event will be queued, and a component, an event component, will start to consume this queue and uh, write this stuff in the unnormalized DB with time, or uh, directly, but normally with time, usually with time, and uh, this unnormalized DB is very common to see no SQLs here or document DBs. It's common. It's not mandatory, okay? And, uh, but this, the, the, the main point is this command will create the flat query, so optimize this, the, the, the stuff here to be fine easily by this request. So let's figure out something here. Applying CQRS, how and Yoda. If there is a Yoda, there is a live code. So uh, all the code is on this link. Okay, there is a small project, Dockerized project, uh, using CQRS. It's totally didactic. It's just for the Euro Python. You could download this and the do some experiments. Uh, I'm using the Nameco framework to, in, this, uh, in this example. Uh, Docker, Mongo, Postgres, and uh, RabbitMQ. So it's the same diagram. But now I changed the names of the components to be clear uh, uh, what's going to happen in our service. It is a user service, OK? So let's see how long time I have. I, I have time. So uh, my create user, it's the imperative command. And uh, there is a, 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 a convention that every event, we will name it in the past. So user created. If uh, I dispatch another event, we'll be in the past too. So let's see. No, let's come back. Now. The code. Let's figure out what we have here. There is my Docker Compose. Uh, the query stack, uh, the DB is a Mongo, a MongoDB here. It's a MongoDB. Uh, the command stack is a, a, a Postgres. There is my command stack here, OK, my Postgres. And uh, I'm using a SKU, a RabbitMQ, OK? And uh, my user service. The user service entities are the user model, OK? And my permissions model. I could have two permissions, admin or user. So. Uh, I'm going to do a post, and uh, I will write the, a new user and uh, the permission that the users, uh, this user have, and uh, is it. Um, there is the order entities or structures that they're going to use 
to my, uh, in my MongoDB. Okay, the service. I could write this in different models, modules, like uh, domain module, repository module, this kind of things, but I wrote all the code in the same file to be easy to navigate. Okay, there is the framework and uh, some configurations, but it's my API, okay, my API. There is a reference to my query stack, and uh, it is my post. My post is the first layer on my command stack. This post going to receive the data from my request, validate if the payload is a valid payload, and uh, prepared a cluster of uh, RPC communication to do uh, a sync RPC, and to put this on my, uh, on my queue, and uh, my queue. And I create a location, and uh, I go into dispatch and 202 event with the location where will be the data when the data obviously going to be consumed by my query stack. Okay, and my API, there are uh, an API to get all users paginated and uh, the user by ID and uh, the user by permission. So I going to get, I, I want to get all the users that has the same permission. It could be a join on my DB because I have two different entities, but won't be, will be a flat query. So there is my command stack and inside my command stack I put my user domain. It could be another module domain, but now it's there. So my command stack, I have a, a uh, it's just a, to, to, to use the framework. It's a dispatcher, an instance of even dispatcher and an instance of the DB. Now I create my, my entity, I commit to this, and I dispatch an event that's user created with the data. And uh, I will dispatch another event to create the relationship between permissions and users. That is my permission user related, okay? Could be a, a broker, so I could have two different uh, uh, event components uh, listen the same uh, uh, this event using a broker, but I'm dispatching two event two events just to to be easy to to, to look what happened. And uh, there is my event component. So look at this. Where we are stopping the user queue, the domain, your dispatch user created, and now I'm going to show the component. The component going to listen the user created event and get this stuff, create the data and normalize the data on my uh, MongoDB. The other stuff is I going to get my permissions rela user related and uh, re create any structure, look if my uh, permission was created or not if not, I'm going to create one. If uh, it was created, I will just append this user structure on the permission that's existing on my DB. So, and this event, on this event, I'm optimizing the data. And why? Because I removed the possibility to use joins, because all my data was prepared to be retrieved with just one ID, that is the admin ID or the user, uh, the, the, the permission ID, sorry. And uh, now the query stack. The query stack, there are just endpoints using RPC to communicate with uh, my API. Uh, the first endpoint gets the information from the MongoDB. The second endpoint gets paginated information about users. And uh, uh, my get user permissions by permissions is exactly that's going to find on the flat query. And if you take a look, is the same query, the same style of query that I'm using to get a user by ID. So it's very easy. It's not expensive, this, this search to my database. So uh, let's see if my containers are running. 
Oh, it's fine. And uh, let's start to consume, to send the data. So first, I'm going to get the info. There is nothing, no users. And now, I go into insert the first user, that's me, Vinicius Pacheco. It's just a simple test. And this user is an admin. OK. Sent it. There is. He was accepted. OK. I don't know what happened. And there is a location with my data. OK. And now, uh, if I find here, there is my user. OK. I'm going to create another two users. The other one is Vinicius Feitosa. That's me again. And uh, it's an admin. It was accepted. And now I'm going to create the Vinicius Pacheco, but now as a user. I don't remember if Vinicius Pacheco was accepted. Let's see this. It was too fast to me. Uh, eh, no, it's Feitosa. It was not the last Pacheco. Uh, now, so if I find here, there are three users. Uh, admin, admin, and user. But I, I have the user description, but not the description user. So I go, now I'm going to find just my users that the permission is admin. And there is my query using CQRS. So my data was uh, moved to my query stack. And now there is the admin permission with the description and all the users that are an admin. In the query, there is no joins. It's a flat query. So now I'm going to find my user, and there is the other user that's just a user. The usability is the same than uh, a, a, a normal application. So to my user, it's not so different. And if you look at this, OK, it's the same that I, I, I have been using in, in my life. But the main point is now, Let's come back to this. If my normalized DB fell on down, it's, it's broken for some motivation or locked, I don't stop at my query stack. And my, user, my users will consume the data. And if my, my, my query stack is over, my, uh, I could uh, write in stuff. Obviously, Vinicius, it's just a user service. It's not so critical. But thinking, do payment. You could receive a payment, but not re uh, retrieving the, the, the report about the payment. But you are selling stuff yet. It's important, I think so. And uh, uh, once, in another uh, job that I have, the disk of the normalized DB uh, broke. And uh, we maintained the application running. It was like a, a monkey test. <laughs> we maintained the application running because all the writing process uh, kept stopped on the queue. And was storage in the queue. When we restarted the DB, using the slave, we could uh, reproduce all the stuff on the DB. And we don't lost the data. But it was just a moment that the unnormalized DB doesn't receive the data. And it is amazing. It's very scalable and uh, maintainable, and uh, obviously uh, 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 make your application stable. So and it's simple. Simple. It's not so hard. So, common mistakes. And for common mistakes, there is a 
Jar Jar Binks. It's a common mistake. Jar Jar Binks is a common mistake. Okay, yeah, George Lucas, thank you. So, but not Rust, then the, 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 the guy in the new movie. I don't know why Benicio Del Toro did uh, The Last of Star Wars was terrible. It was a Rust character. Rust then George R. Binks. I don't know. George R. Binks eat some insects. I don't know. Some bugs. So, uh, secure S and event sourcing must be applied together. It's not true. It's a common mistake. There is an example that's, that I'm just using SecureRS. They have different proposals that, and they work very well together, like Han Solo and Chewbacca. But uh, they have different proposals. One is to improve performance and uh, scalability and uh, stability. And the other one is to create a streaming history about your data. So event sourcing, you, using event sourcing, you could reproduce the data in a specific moment of the time and to know what happened. So CQRS going to improve your stability and performance and uh, 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 make a better application for you. So, uh, CQRS requires eventual consistency. Eventual consistency is the uh, most common usage. It's the most common scenario in CQRS. But if you try to use the first option of synchronization that I shown, uh, it, it's, it's not eventual consistency. It's not totally eventual consistency. Try to be fast. But, it's not mandatory, eventual consistency in CQRS. CQRS depends on queues and message brokers. It's a good practice, but not mandatory. So you could use CQRS trying to trigger at some events or using uh, uh, logs from your data, like uh, MySQL logs or something like this. There, there are many usages that you could use. I like to use queues and message brokers because I think that's easy to, uh, 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 to, in, to create an intervention or to monitor it. CQRS is easy. It's not easy. And why? There are more things to monitor. There are two dbs to take care. There are... Uh, uh, many stuff in your, in your uh, 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 stack that, that isn't in a normal application, in the normal architecture that I, uh, we, we looked at early. So, SecureRS is not easy to implement, but not so complex as we think. You know, if good tools, you could have a, a good implementation. CQRS is architecture. No, it's not architecture. It's a pattern inside your architecture. So archi it, it's, it's a good pattern that uh, is cross-platform. It's not for Java or just for Python or for Go or for, doesn't matter. It's for everyone could apply CQRS as a pattern. It's not a, an architecture. And uh, my English teacher told me, she's from Dublin, and told me that's very funny. I don't know. CQRS is the best thing since the slice of bread. And uh, she told me, oh, it's so funny. <laughs> the slice of bread. <laughs> so Sarah, thank you by the English class. I, I, I'm bad. <laughs> and uh, again, there's my book. If you would like to learn something more than CQRS or other patterns, there is an interesting pattern that uh, I documented that uh, the caching first is interesting and another pattern is internal patterns for service and the communication patterns. Uh, it's very steep, steeper than a lunch here and at the dinner. <laughs> so uh, they book obviously. And uh, there's a link. Please give milk for my kids. I don't have kids, but uh, uh, yeah, my cats. 
And uh, may the secure RS be with you. And, okay. Thank you. Thank you. So, any questions, please come up, up here. So, uh, no? there, there. Okay, so uh, I have a question. Okay. Yeah. So. Oh, there is a question. Oops. Okay. Ah. Ah, okay. Yeah. Um, so I have a question. I came in slightly late, so I probably missed it, which is my bad, I'm sorry, and maybe missed the very introduction. And, and I'm also, it's quite new to me. So I'd like to clarify my understanding. Um, so what, what I gleaned from is, is that you use two databases. You have your normal normalized database, which is your canonicalized data store, and you have an unnormalized database, which is specifically optimized for the queries that you need, so that the straight queries can go to the, to the denormalized database, and that provides the, the primary advantage of the pattern you're advocating. Did, did I get that right? Uh, if I understand your question, yes. Uh, uh, my, my, my idea is create a curse stack, uh, the curse stack responsible just to retrieve the data. So it should be the most optimized as possible. And uh, you could apply cache and all the stuff over this stack. I, I don't apply to, to, to make the example because uh, I would like to make it simple to see. But you could take care of this square stack, this square DB, like uh, all the other DB, but uh, all the source of true DB. But uh, the main idea is optimize this, this segment of your stack as possible. And, and does this mean the way you have schema changes, you, you, you have to apply migrations to, or where you have, you have to apply migrations to both databases, where you have new queries, you, you have to um, generate a whole new set of data sure. into your second database? Sure, my, 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 my entities are different on both the Bs. Right. So um, my entities, my migrations, I, I, it's another stuff, you okay? I, I'm, I'm doing this. Some people just try to reflect the same uh, uh, entities, but uh, uh, it's like presume flat queries. It's not mandatory to use flat queries. If you try to use flat queries, it's, I, I, I see that you should, uh, maybe you should create new entities specifically, specifically for the query stack. Yeah, it was a really interesting talk and I enjoyed it and learned from it, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, and um, basically I went from the same. So when you are uh, going into the right part that you need to scale, and you said in the start of the talk, uh, how you actually go into scale. So you are going to have different right instances, different, different right databases with different schemas, or how, how is the approach for that? For which? which uh, for the command part. So To the command part, uh, the, the main idea is command normally is, is thinking, I, I will use a protocol example, MongoDB in the version two. To put something in MongoDB in the version two, block the read, okay, in the version two, not more in the version three. And, uh, but uh, maybe for your business, it is in, it's interesting to use the Mongo engine. So, use secure, using SecureRS, you could totally divide this. The, the simple separation of stacks improve performance because now the writing process want to lock the, the, the query process. The scalability using master slaves and uh, different instances and this kind of things is practically the same. The, 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 the main goal of the pattern is segregated responsibilities to make this more resilient and improve performance to don't make that one operation lock the other. Okay. It's the main idea. No, but, but the co instance control of the bees and this kind of stuff is the same approach. So the, the right improvement, uh, so how you are actually going to scale the right part? Uh, that's what I mean. So you are going to queue and you will want to deal with a queue that if it's delayed, it, the queue will be taking or? Uh, there, there, you could apply chargings as an example that will be very optimized and is not so optimized in some engines for uh, query stack. 
because what happened if, with some engines using charging uh, uh, 4DB, you have a, a, an instance that's responsible to administrate all the, the, the other DBs. That comes, is going to write because that's more idle, we'll get the request and write on the DB. But to find maybe is not so interesting because uh, you're going to receive the request by the same charging and that should find in where is the data, uh, why all this data was not propagated for all the chargings. And uh, in uh, using SecureRS, it's not an issue. And why? Because you are not interested to use this, uh, uh, this collect the data from the charging because the charging is just a source of true. It's, it's improved performance on the writing segment. And uh, your data is streamed on a Kafka or a RabbitMQ or ActiveMQ, doesn't matter, and it will write in the query stack that is responsible to retrieve the data. So that could have another approach to scalability different than charging. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's uh, just an example about, oh, you could use charging, you could use your master slave decide, you could use all the stuff that is fast to read but is, is slowly to, to, to get data. And uh, this kind of approach is not more, more an issue if your business requires too much uh, uh, retrieve, um, too much search. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Hi. Um, Hi. In the, when you were talking about the different uh, strategies to synchronize uh, the two stacks, uh, you talk about the synchronize, the event based, that it's the one that you explained, and then you talk, you talk about the, that the, if I understand good, the, the query stack ask uh, for an update when he's, he knows that it's outdated, it's how he knows that it's outdated. Um, uh, there are some uh, approach to use this, it's more, the more harder to apply, it's the hard way to apply, and uh, it's very, uh, uh, usually the people create a, like a semaphore in the streaming too, like uh, in the, on the streaming, there is this, you put a semaphore on the Kafka and uh, okay, uh, I'm very outdated from this because the data stream is, uh, uh, it's there or it's full and I'm going to get the information from the, 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 the common stack. And uh, there are the, the, the logs of the DB that you could consume in this and check, okay, my DB logs, and are, are very full, I don't, I move in DB logs from different segments of your, your server and uh, okay, there is, it's full of logs and I should consume these logs to create my, uh, query, to improve my query stack. It, there are two different approaches. One is, that's more common, okay? One is look in the, the, the bus and to see if there is a sign out to consume the data. And another one is looking the, the DB logs that it was, you reserved a, spe a specific part. And uh, a, a very common approach is using like a JVM separation, that's the, the hidden and the old part of DB logs. And when you consume the data, you move the hidden to the old part of the logs. And uh, if the hidden is full, it's time to get the data again. And, uh, uh, the logs is optimized to, to use to element, to, to, to bring the, the sufficient information to register on the query stack. That was clear or was, yeah, well, we, we could talk, idea. it's, it's, it's hard. I, we could talk and, and yeah, yeah. more calm and uh, you'll be, will be interesting. Thank you. Uh, more questions? Okay. Uh, thanks for the talk. I, I really enjoyed it. Um, it seems to me that when writing to say the local flat database or the MongoDB, whatever it is, um, your data predominantly comes from the events, at least in, the, in, this, in this example. However, when you start a new application running, a new service, presumably, or in other scenarios, you need to be able to read the data from the relational database that stores the conical representation. And it seems to me that there's some complexity there in the sense that you need to have you need to be able to, to write to, to local da database using two different sources of information. You need to be able to have the logic to do the writes based on events or the logic to do the writes based on the relational database. I was wondering if you find that's a problem for you or how you manage that complexity or those two different kind of pieces of logic in your, in your implementations. Um, 
Yes, it's one of the drawbacks using CQRS. Mainly if you want to, cre to, to create specialized queries, mm -hmm. if you just want to replicate and segregate the search and the finds and the, 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 the right process, it's okay. It's not a, a, a consequence. But if you want to cre create flat queries, it will be a consequence. You will have the two different... Uh, I, I'm going to show you something here. Uh, if you look my model, uh, specifically for this business, uh, I'm, I'm using a user. And uh, there is the, it's, it's my uh, Postgres, okay, two tables. And uh, there is a document for the user that's going to get the user information, just user. And uh, I create a struct to create a embedded document here. So I have different entities and I have different logics and it will be a normal scenario inside CQRS if you're trying to create flat queries. The, the mistake that you should take care of is don't split the domain rules between the event component and the domain. So uh, it's, it's a it's a normal mistake. Here, on my domain, I prepare the data to be consumed by my uh, event component. Okay, all the data. I'm dispatching two events. That's not a good practice, but I'm dispatching just to show the stuff. But uh, it's very common to see something like this. Oh, I would like to create a relationship between permissions and users. And I don't want to have both uh, entities being consumed in the same domain. So it's like consume two repositories in the same domain. And uh, the people move the second part to here. And it's a real mistake because you start to split the domain. And uh, it's a mistake. But Two different entities, two different uh, logics, one specialized to write and another one specialized to read is exactly what CQRS means. Okay? Thank you again, and uh, so enjoy your lunch, I guess. Thank you. If you have more questions, I'm able to answer you. Thank you.